Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Deep Roots Movement. Today we are continuing our Islamic Slavery and Salvation series, focusing on healing our hearts and healing the whole. What could we have done and what are we to do? So when we think about the concept of slavery as the ultimate riba and the hurting and harming of the, the wali, the stealing of the orphan's wealth, the cutting flesh from the backs, I mean, from, from cutting, cutting flesh from living creatures, you know, from cattle, and then humans being treated like cattle, the horror of having to do harm, psychological and physical damage and harm in, in a preemptive and in a reactionary manner in order to keep people enslaved and uh, to utilize power dynamics and manipulation. The, the tremendous sin that that takes upon individuals and the collective that defends that and justifies that using Allah's name, stuck for Allah. Um, so we have to consider the problems of that. Now, this has led to, from my assessment and what I have been shown in sajda and in contemplation, is that this has led to tremendous sin being upon the ummah and has led to our degradation. This ended our uh, caliphal expansion and it began a decay of not only, or not only the ulama that was justifying it and participating in it in various ways, um, but also the ummah as a whole. And this also sidetracked and, and, uh, and subvert, potentially to some extent subverted our original mission as a Muslim ummah, which is to draw near unto the truth, to seek truth wholeheartedly and with full hearted devotion and to call ourselves and others to Toba and Tazkiyah and to purify the inner and the outer world of all tyranny, oppression, and enslavement. The thing is, what's done, we can now undo to a certain extent. We are giving, given an opportunity. Allah is bringing things into focus right now because we are facing uh, imminent extinction, genocide, you know, the destruction not only of, of uh, humanity, as of organic humanity, but of our Adamic sacred clay, of our human genome. And those who remain will be, uh, you know, uh, recreated in, in uh, a Dajjalic image and made transhuman and enslaved. So we're facing imminent destruction and enslavement. So we need to consider the role of slavery in overcoming slavery. This is why I've, I've titled this series is Islamic Slavery and Salvation. To save one man, it's as if we have saved all of humanity. To hurt, harm, kill, or destroy one human is as if we destroyed all of humanity. So we are going to focus on overcoming the nafs that incites to evil within ourselves and within our collective, inshallah, through Toba and Tazkiyah. So, um, when it comes to overcoming, to struggling against tyranny, oppression, enslavement. Now imagine, there are certain things that have been changed within not only our histories, through the destruction of, of large populations of humans, of Muslims, and our vast, which are individual and collective libraries of our collective memory, but also of actual text-based text libraries. You know, like, like there have been many sackings and burnings and destructions of libraries in the Islamic world and beyond multiple times. You know, it's like we had, we have off top uh, Alexandria, we've got Xi'an, we've got Baghdad, we've got libraries and whatnot in India and in Central Asia, uh, Persia, you know, um, all these, all these areas. Uh, the scholars can fill in the blanks on this. Um, I'm just dot connecting and seeking to have a big picture view for problem solving, for practical problem solving purposes, utilizing the prophetic path um, as 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 and as my framework, inshallah, in trying to trying to problem solve for us so that we can we can pull our solutions together in a brand new synthesis, inshallah. We are capable of so much. We have tremendous potential. Now, um, as to what we could have done, imagine when we were expanding outward. There were many, many Muslims who they really genuinely believed that they were there to end tyranny, oppression, 
and enslavement and to, to bring people into an excellent prophetic way of life to demonstrate it. And there were many places that actually welcomed the Muslim armies when they arrived. Now, um, imagine a couple different scenarios. Imagine that the Muslims had genuinely, sincerely been going to free people from tyranny, oppression, and enslavement. You know, this would have been the best form of dawah. You know, like, what's done is done, but we need to think about what can be done. So, if we had gone in and, and freed slaves, all slaves are automatically free. And they're given a, they're, you know, they're, they're given the choices. They're not forced into the religion. They are definitely not enslaved. We do not replace tyranny and oppression with a new tyranny and oppression with righteous words. Stupfrullah is dirty. We do not replace one enslavement with another, with another slaver and uh, one slave master with another. And this is what happened in many cases, you know. Um, so, you know, raping and pillaging certainly took place. There were people who participated in land piracy and sea piracy on the Muslim side. And to say otherwise is disingenuous, dishonest, and it's highly problematic and it makes us look like hypocrites. Because people study history. Serious people study history and study ourselves. Now, if we had gone in and started freeing slaves and as Dawah, we were like, we were like, we are going to share our wealth with you and opportunity with you. You have been enslaved. We want to now give you the opportunity. You've got, you've got a, a couple of choices right now. Um, if, we are, if we're moving, if our armies are moving on to the next location, now you don't want to be re-enslaved. You don't want to be in a bad situation. So you can come along with us until we get into the next safe land and then we can leave you there and we'll leave you there with resources to get on your feet, connect you with people that we know there for business opportunities. You can begin training in, a, in, in uh, you know, like maybe we can, we can find some land for you because we are people of Sadaka. You know, uh, you know we, are, we are to give charity. We are to be of benefit to others by sharing our wealth. And, and sharing our wealth can be tremendously beneficial. Um, and we could, have, we could have taken people out of slavery and helped them to get into a safe location um, or to stay with us and, and learn trades and skills. And, and then people automatically would have seen if, if we're behaving in an upright prophetic manner, they're going to see our excellence and many people are going to come into, into Islam naturally in, in, in a non-manipulative manner. You know, it's kind of like when, if we go to a soup kitchen and we offer people food, um, it's hypocritical if we make them, and, 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 and wrong, if we make them listen to a sermon and get preached at before they get to eat. Or if we're pressuring them, you know, to, to, to take shahada, to take shahada on camera, whatever. You know, it's like, I'm telling you, we need authenticity. People are, people are like trying to get points by getting people to take shahada. People don't even understand what they are, what they are doing in many cases. And then they go in and they've got their own free thoughts. They left Christianity or another religion for various reasons. They come into Islam and they do not realize that now they're going to be considered, if they're, if they're thinking about things, they're going to be a zendik. They're going to be monafic. They're going to be, you know, a, a kafir. You know, like they're going to put themselves out of the fold of Islam for various reasons. And if they question things, if they feel that the Muslims are unkind and they feel that they're put into exile or they feel like they can't be around people who are, who are cruel-hearted, close-hearted, close-fisted, then if they leave Islam, then you got the same people who are trying to get them to take shahada saying, yeah, if we get in power, you're dead. You are an apostate and we will take you out. And then trying to find ways of, of justifying this. This is dirty. So what I'm saying is we want authentic, heartfelt dawah. We want genuine transformation of the heart and transformation of society, inshallah, into an upright, wise and compassionate, merciful, just society. Um, one with minimal uh, governmental frameworks, you know, where it's like the more that we come into an enlightened, natural, organic, pure and ethical way of living, the, the less we need governmental structures and frameworks, you know, like, like Sharia is actually natural law that we can discover through reason, through intu intuition, through contemplation within a prophetic framework, you know, within, from, through a prophetic lens utilizing the Quran, utilizing prophetic examples. Um, and so anyway, if we had taken this approach of sharing with people by freeing them from slavery, also when people are, many people are in slavery because of debt. If we had started freeing people of debt as we went into new areas. So for instance, we're doing business along the Silk Road. We're doing business in non-Muslim territories. Imagine if we were regularly using our resources 
to free people from slavery and, and apprentice them into our businesses along the way, introducing them to other businesses. We could have made tremendous inroads. I mean, we did do this in certain areas. This really did happen. You know, everything I'm saying is not fresh and new. These, these, there, is, there is historical precedent for this within our history. And inshallah, some of the scholars know where, this, where these materials are and can, and can pull it together and demonstrate it in an effective manner with proof texts. Um, I'm giving an overview and putting out as many ideas because we need to survive and we need to thrive. And we cannot have the Sufianis take over. We need to be transformed in the heart. Now, check this out. So, we could have, what could we have done? We could have worked to eliminate all tyranny, oppression, injustice, and enslavement. We needed, uh, we, you know, and, and it's connected to what we can do now. Hand ups, uh, not handouts. You give, we give handouts to get people temporarily on their feet, but we have training programs, entrepreneurial programs, workshops. This is where we, uh, we're moving forward. If we develop a community center model around the planet, around the world, where we have um, kind of on the Kuyesi model, uh, based on Sinan, who used to be a slave. He, he had been enslaved, and then he was the, the, the master architect of the Ottoman Empire. And the Turks are still basing almost, you know, like a huge percentage of their uh, Masajid building on his designs. And, um, but originally, he had, like, he, he based many of his ideas, from what I know, on the Prophet's mosque, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, in Medina, that, that acted as a community center. It had, it had the Musala, it was a place to, to, to meet and, and have community meetings um, for, for learning opportunities, for um, sharing of wealth and resources and food, um, for the arts, for culture, etc. And so he had it set up to where it's like, if you go to some of the Kuyesis he set up around, around Istanbul and other areas of the Ottoman Empire, you'll, you'll notice that there, there's usually a beautiful uh, masjid and it's, it's interesting that he would reference earlier architecture and traditions. So for instance, um, many of his great works um, are referencing Hagia Sophia. So it's like it's referencing Christian architecture from the locality. Um, and you also see some elements from Armenian architecture, etc. So anyway, the community center model would have uh, soup kitchens. It would have where we can do we can do we can offer service to the to the Muslim community. We we should eliminate poverty to the greatest extent possible. Um, there would be workshops. There would be markets around there. There would be madrasas. There would be Quran schools. There would be healing centers and medical schools. And we are moving into a healing paradigm and we need to be at the cutting edge of this, brothers and sisters. We should be the healers that the world needs. And we also need to be the highest level scholars that the world needs. And um, this is how we offer Dawa. We need to demonstrate through transforming ourselves in our community to one of excellence. And the healing paradigm is based in Bismillah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. You know, where, where our Lord is compassionate truth, wise and compassionate truth, and uh, everything is about seeking truth as it really is, aligning our lives to truth and authenticity and, um, and dissolving falsehood, dis exposing and dissolving lies, falsehood, inauthenticity, um, artificiality. So, um, so basically through offering training programs, relieving people of debt, um, demonstrating the excellence of an organic and holistic natural way of life that's, that, cre that works on uh, organizing and harmonizing communities with the, the natural ecosystems, with the, the ancient history and lining something up that is uh, going to be of benefit to the future generations to come. So what we need to do is we um, eliminate the roots of atrocity by seeing them as they are. So really we need to think on a medical model in a certain sense. So we want to, we want to diagnose using all the data. We want to diagnose what is the problem. We want to have a prognosis. We want to prescribe the best medicine. And then we want to engage in prevention from then on. So with the, with the diagnosis, the UMA has a heart sickness. You know, we are one body and there is an illness spread throughout us because we have been taking in unhealthy and toxic inputs to ourselves in thought, word, and deed. And we have been putting unhealthy and toxic outputs into the world in thought, word, and deed. So we need to ensure that we are, um, you know, so first off, we've got, we've got that diagnosis. Now our prognosis, if we do not do something about this rapidly, the prognosis is extinction for humanity and enslavement for the remainder. 
this is what will happen if we do not engage in Toba and Teskia individually and collectively. And, you know, or hypothetically, we don't deal with it and then we actually actively spread illnesses of the heart even further. This is, this is highly problematic. So the prognosis in that way is not good. However, it is not a terminal illness. We can actually reverse and heal ourselves completely with Allah's help because every problem has a solution within it. Every illness has a healing within it. We have everything that we need within ourselves and around us by Allah's magnificent, brilliant design and planning. Alhamdulillah, this is, this is beautiful, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. All right, so, um, so, and, and so we've got, we've got our, our uh, diagnosis, we've got our prognosis and the prescription. The prescription is clearly Toba and Tazkia. Now, among these lines, I'm just taking, I, I just wrote down some notes. Um, and so basically we go through Toba and Tazkia, a process of seeing reality as it actually is, was, might be. We go through the diagnosis, prognosis, prescription, healing, and prevention. Um, we need to free people from all types of slavery and enslavement, you know, genetic, material, um, financial, economic, um, physical, you know, and, and we, we should demonstrate excellence, people, in all things. We need to overcome the nefs that, so for instance, all sexual slavery is rooted in the nefs. So that means that, that we need to prevent ourselves from falling into lust. lust. We need to, to lay out uh, healthy fences, healthy frameworks to protect us from, um, from, from falling into sin or bringing others into sin in any way. Um, so let's see, we need to eliminate the roots of atrocity. We need to seek refuge in truth from all evil and corruption. We need to make sincere intention, heartfelt commitments um, that, that we are strongly determined to, to, um, to inculcate, to, uh, um, to embody, to embody. All right, so we need to cultivate healthy, accurate views of reality. We need to cultivate pure and ethical thinking, pure and ethical um, uh, uh, wording. You know, our, our, our verbal expression needs to be as pure and ethical as, as, as possible and eventually beautified. You know, as we attain maturity, we will naturally, you know, it'll be, it'll be beautiful, inshallah. Um, also, uh, our actions need to be as pure and ethical as possible. We need to have the most pure and ethical livelihood. Uh, you know, um, the work that we do, we should be working for Allah, working for truth. Everything should be oriented to, to, to getting us back to the garden. And so we actually establish garden, you know, we, we go to garden-like principles and, and, um, and implement um, a framework that will guide us to the goal as best as possible. And um, so let me see, we need to uh, cultivate, you know, we, are, we have a contemplative path. So we need to develop calm and concentration and relieve ourselves in our community of stress and trauma. And we need to, to cultivate the, the most excellent absorption and insight you know, um, all right, so um, we do these things to overcome and then prevent trauma and abuse. Um, we, uh, let me see, uh, as far as self and other in thoughts and words and actions, we need to protect and cultivate the garden of creation and all its creatures, human and non-human, non-Muslim and Muslim, putting others first. We need to engage in deep honesty with ourselves and one another. We need to engage in the most excellent sadaqah. We need to master our sexual energies in, in a halal manner, not in an oppressive, like we're, we're not trying to suppress energies. We're, we're, we're middle path people, we're people of moderation. And um, all right, we need to purify our world, self and other, body and mind. We need to be slaves to truth alone and not to false idolatry. Like we do not have a false idolatrous slave master supreme. That is a wrong view of Allah. Allah is the Lord of all worlds. Allah is the source of love, the source of creation. Allah is the creator. Allah is truth. Compassion is, is you know, the, the, the compassionate one, the forgiving one, the wise. Um, so we need to implement, to cultivate and implement a healing paradigm. We need our community centers, the Kulyesi uh, Sinan model. He'd been a slave. Uh, let me see. Um, we need also contemplation retreat centers in nature. That, that provide where, where Muslims can do service to one another by going and cooking and providing excellence. And we do 10 day retreats 
um, which is within our tradition to do 10 day retreats. And this would be a nature where people could eat pure and ethical food. Why? Because we have, because of wars and all kinds of imbalances and traumas, people are so traumatized and lands are so traumatized. So we need to be able to have a place to decompress and heal. So we have these 10 day retreats where we can focus on, on Salah, on Som, on contemplation, on being in nature and eating excellent food mindfully with appreciation. And then we've got, we've got 30 day retreats and 40 day retreats. This is all prophetic tradition. Um, and these would be in nature. We could have long walks, up to 40 day walks perhaps in small groups in order to immerse ourselves in nature through contemplation, praying out in nature and healing our hearts and healing our families and communities. And there are elements that could be for the sisters, for the brothers, you know, within these, we could have, uh, you know, places for children. And, like, and then we bring those energies back into our, our, you know, into the world. So be in the world, not of it, so to speak. We need to learn how to share our resources justly, wisely, and compassionately. This is practical, pro practical prophetic problem solving, inshallah. We need to overcome bigotry, supremacy, and inferiority complexes based on race, caste, birth, birthplace, education, economic status, religion, nationality, sex, genetics, ethnicity, and a false sense of purity in any respect. Gen Those are the Iblisian paths. Iblis is a gen supremacist, and he has taught humanity. He's tried to, tried to deceive. Remember, he lays in wait. And, and he, he, is, he is sabotaging us and trying to pull us into unhealthy worldview and unhealthy practice so that he can prove that we are corruptors of the earth around us, corruptors of the earth that we live within, and murderous. Now, it's not just murderous of, of, uh, of, 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 of humans, and, uh, but also of, uh, of excellence and, and excellent quality. So we need to cultivate the best. Because remember, the only true superiority is in piety in ethical, moral excellence, energetic purity, people. This is what we need to come into. We need to protect our Adamic sacred clay. We need to respect our, our, our biomes, our ecosystems, our interconnection. Our, our interconnection to all of creation is here within our human bodies, within the human heart. You are the descendant and the inheritor of Adam alayhi salam. We need to live like it. We need to treat our bodies like this is Adam's very body. We need to treat one another like we are conversing with Adam. We are seriously, you know, think about it like this is Adam or this is Hawa in front of you. You know, your spouse, that's Hawa. Your husband, that's Adam. Your son is Adam. Your daughter is Hawa. If we think like this, if we treat everybody as a potential Wali, this is potentially rapid path. We draw near to Allah. It is a gift to stand before Allah and, and with appreciation, go deeply into your body. You know, like go in and be very present with your body with appreciation, be present with your breath and your body sensations. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this short, cut this short at this point, inshallah. But this was to focus on eliminating the roots of atrocity. We have to heal ourselves and heal the whole, inshallah. We have to turn back the tide. This could apply to Muslims and non-Muslims, but first off, Muslims, we need to lead by example. We need to practice the prophet the practical prophetic path of purification and perfection and beautification and then people will naturally see the truth of it this is deep dawah people I, we call it deep dawah this is not some shallow expression of it um so people please consider this sit with this spend extra time in sajda and ask allah if this is accurate if there's truth to it beg to be forgiven beg to be made whole and purified pour your heart out cry on the carpet you know what I'm saying? People, we can, we can turn, we have to break this black magic spell. This is absolutely critical, absolutely critical. And the way is always the prophetic way, which is Toba and Tazkiyah. You are well loved, you are much appreciated. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. This is your brother Ilyasin, and we are the Deep Roots Movement.